Good afternoon, friends. This is uh, Dr. James McBean again. And today we want to speak about the secret to do spiritual warfare and to walk in the Christian life. This is our Bible study today. In Proverbs 24 verse 3 he said true wisdom is an house built and by understanding it is established in Hosea 4 6 he said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge you cannot overcome temptation if you do not know the technique to deal with each different kind of temptation from 1947 to 1956 Rocky Marciano held the title and retire undefeated and one of the reasons for his success is because he know the technique of boxing if you don't know the technique of what you're doing you will never be able to master it We do not win war by having many weapons. Weapons do not mean anything if it is only digital and depend on electronics. It can be switched off even by a clever enemy. But God teach us in his word how to win spiritual warfare the first thing that we need to do is that we need to flow in it we need to flow in the technique as we learn them apply them to our life look at Romans 12 verse 15 he said rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep that's what I mean by flow some people they don't do this they do the opposite when you are rejoicing they're hungry but he say here that we must rejoice with them that are rejoicing and we must weep with them that are weeping don't reverse it the, f the very first ingredients that you have to add to your Christian life you and I have to add to our Christian life is self-examination in 1 Corinthians 11 28 he said but let a man examine himself in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 he said examine yourself therefore whether he be in the faith prove your own self You have to have this technique to your life, our life, daily. Because people are not going to examine you to help you. They are going to examine you to tear you down. And we have to examine ourselves. Because if we don't examine ourselves, we will ruin ourselves. Because one of the first enemy we're gonna deal with is called our whole Adamic nature that was that is inside of us the Apostle Paul said for I found a law that when I would do good evil is present itself with me the scripture teaches that we must fight the good fight of faith in 1 Timothy 6 12 he said fight the good fight of faith 
lay hold on eternal life is a warfare that we are involved in it's not a game this is a warfare real warfare the second technique you see in fight you're going to have run if you cannot win when you are overwhelmed you must run and if you cannot hold run the enemy you must hide running is a part of fighting hiding is also a part of fighting in Saint, Ma Saint Matthew 10 verse 23 he said, but when they persecute you in this city, flee he into another city. So, flee is one way in doing spiritual warfare. If you cannot overcome, you cannot fight the battle, you cannot win where you are, flee. Flee. And it told us what we must flee what we must flee from in 1st Corinthians 10 14 he said therefore my beloved virgin flee from idolatry he teaches what we must flee from in 1st Timothy 6 10 he said for the love of money is the root of evil which while some covet after they have heard from the faith and pierced themselves through with many a sorrow but you O man of God flee these things so right here he tells us that we must flee it is telling us what we must flee from he said that we must flee from the love or the craving for money and then is in title second second timothy 2 verse 22 he said that we must flee youthful loss flee and in first corinthians 6 18 he said that we must flee fornication but Fornication is not just what the church today teaches. It's bigger than that. It's more than that. But we will not go into it in this lesson. We will go to it in another lesson. Faith. When a believer... Okay. If you don't have faith, you cannot please God. You cannot serve God. Because the scripture said, For without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For they that come to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. But faith is a bloodline thing. Is a bloodline thing. In Second Timothy one verse five, he said, "No, in Titus, one verse five, he said, when I call to remember the unfine faith that is in thee, which dwell first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded." that it is in thee also so faith is a bloodline thing it will not pick it up it runs in the family then he said that we must hide hide is another part of fighting 
This is another way you deal with certain kind of temptation. In St. John 12 and verses 36, it said, While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of the light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. If the people that you're dealing with don't want the truth, don't want the word of God, don't waste time with them hide from them because they will pull you down they will make you falter they will make you miss the mark yeah we said in first john 5 16 if any man see his brother sin as sin which is which is not unto death he shall hawk and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I did not say you should pray for it. So there are certain people. Do even bother waste time with them. It's a waste of time. Then. It said that there are certain things that you must endure. We're talking about the different technique now, how to deal with different kind of temptation. Something he said you must endure. To endure means to tolerate, to bear. In Second Timothy two verses three, he said, "Therefore endure hardness." So hardness, hard time, is something that you must endure as a good soldier you know why they must endure because it comes and it's go it's like a season you didn't say you must flee from it you didn't say you must fight it you say you must endure it and then in James 4 verse 7 it says submit yourself therefore to God resist the devil and he shall flee from you so there are some temptation that you must resist some you must endure some you must resist resist means to fight and there are some you must not answer some temptation when somebody beating you and try to get the worst out of you and try to make you say what they want you to say so they can use it against you he said in Proverbs 26 and verses 4 answer thou not a fool according to his folly lest thou also be like unto him then there are some temptations you're not supposed to endure and, you, and there are some you're not supposed to resist but you must come out from among them in 2nd Corinthians 6 verses 17 he said therefore come out from among them there are some people that you must come out from among them there are some church you never go you never grow in the faith you have to move out from among them then in Timothy 2nd Timothy 2 16 he said but shun profane and vain babbling for they will increase unto more ungodliness so you see there are some kind of temptation that you must shun Some people come to debate you. Some people just love to hear themselves debate. Shun them. Even when you and them saying the same thing, them still try to debate you. Shun them. Shun profane. Shun them. Then 
Count the cost. Count the cost. Our Lord said, Why call me Lord, Lord? And do not do the things which I say. You see the type of Christian, there are some Christian who just Lord, Lord, in a string all from Jesus. And they're not doing what they're supposed to do. It doesn't matter how much you pray as the Lord give me a job. Provide this job for me. You still have to learn to write the resume. And it don't matter how much you pray and say, Lord, give me this job, give me this job, 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 job. You still have to learn how to win the interview. You have to know what close to where when you're going for the interview. You have to know how to talk to the interviewer. How to answer a question. How to answer the question that was asked to you. How to look him in the eye, he, she in the eye. How to control your nervousness. And how to talk to them to win that interview. And when you get the job, you have to know how to keep the job. You could pray until your knee fall off. You still have to learn these things. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The string out on Jesus. Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me. And you're not doing what Him tell you to do. It doesn't make no sense. Christian that you see had bad concept, bad ideas. You must shun them. Stay away from them. At one time I belonged to a circle of about eight, eight of us, eight friends, and all of us get hit with diabetes. And one of the main friends, me and a, a Vietnamese friend of mine, we were taking our medication according to what the doctor had of us. But we were working and some natural herbal medicine and, and decide on our own. And we found something that seemed to work. And one of my friends, the deacon, I run to share the information with him. And he wouldn't listen to me, he wouldn't hear me. He told me that he give his diabetes to Jesus. And if he give it to Jesus, how come he have it? He wouldn't even hear me. So I have to just leave. I just leave his home. And go back home. I didn't see him for about six months. So I decided to stop by his house again. To see if I see him. I usually see him at the Walmart. When I went to his home. His place locked up. His newspaper piled up. So I went to his church. One Sunday. To ask his pastor for him. The pastor told me that. He died. I said what? He said yes he died of diabetes complication. They cut off a part of his foot. And then they cut off another part. And then they cut off another part. And eventually they cut off another foot. And they cut off and they cut off. Until finally he died. And we buried him. But I said but he told me. He gave his diabetes to Jesus. And he no have it. Well, Jesus must have given it back to him. I say, oh my God, that's a mean thing to do. He gave it to Jesus, and Jesus gave it right back to him. Pack it up and tie it up and hand it right back to him because Jesus don't want it. Wrong concept of Christianity. Wrong concept of Jesus. And when you see they string out on Jesus like that and not doing what they supposed to do. And when he backfire, they mad. I've seen some of them mad. 
Because they were sitting down every day, Jesus, 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 and what they're supposed to do, they're not doing it. Then he said, You must withdraw yourself from some of them. Withdraw means to move away from them, get away from them. If you cannot change the bad situation that you see on the job, do not fight it. Just withdraw yourself from it. You see the bad situation in the church that you cannot change. You, you try everything in your power and nothing changing. Just withdraw from it. In St. Matthew 12, 14, he said, Then the Pharisees went out and held a counsel against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from there. He withdrew himself. When the apostles know that the people plan to stone them and to use them despitefully, the Bible said that they, they withdrew themselves. In Acts 14 verse 5, And when there was an assault made both of the Gentile also of the Jews with their ruler to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled. Don't sit down and let people beat you to death. I remember in Jamaica, the story was told about a Chinese man and a black man was fighting and the black man put a punch on the Chinese man and the Chinese man brother called out to the Chinese man who get the punch and said good girl John run good girl John run don't make a legal man kill you run You realize that the people plan to murder you. Don't sit back and keep saying Jesus will protect me and Jesus will send angel and Jesus will do that and Jesus will do that. We see even our Lord when he realized that the Pharisees plan to destroy him. The Bible says he withdrew himself. And we see the apostle when they said they realized that the people plan to use them despitefully and to stone them, they fed. You see pastor for a church and you realize that the people plan to set you up and to ruin you. To ruin your reputation. Don't stay there and say, the Lord has got to send angel. What happened to your foot? Where you got your foot far? Get away from them. Then he went on to tell you that you must avoid avoid certain things, avoid certain people, avoid certain place. In Romans 16 verse 17, no, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offense contrary to the doctrine which we have learned and avoid them. There are some people you must avoid. In 2 Timothy 2 verses 23 says, But foolish and unlearned question avoid. So you see, there are something you must flee from. There are something you must resist. There are something you must shun. And there are something you must avoid. Which one do you avoid? Foolish questions. And learn questions. Knowing that the agenda more strife. You see, you must avoid foolish question and genealogy and contention and striving about the laws. For they are unprofitable and vain. You go to church on Sunday and the other man go to church on Saturday. Don't be standing there with him a whole blank argument about which day is right. We dry yourself from it. You may go say your own. Yes, make him say your own. The scriptures say that you must avoid it. Avoid it. Because it's not going to help you. 
You're gonna see him tomorrow and he's still going to be a Sabbath keeper. And you're going to see him going to see you tomorrow and you're still going to be a Sunday keeper. One believe him baptize in Jesus' name, and they even know what Jesus' name is. And one believe him baptize in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. None of us hardly know anything. You see. No one no argument with it. Then there's another one that says you must agree with the adversary. Not to run now, not to shun now, not to avoid now, but to agree. He said Matthew 5 verse 25. He said, agree with that adversary quickly when you are in the way with him. I was driving down the road 1.7 miles from my house coming home and the police pulled me over and said I was doing 28 miles an hour in a 20 mile zone and I told her that I said miss you're pulling my leg he said no I'm not pulling your leg is it truth I'm not pulling your leg I said but look up ahead I was up there so there's a school bus breakdown in the road and all the vehicles are going bumper to bumper so how could I be doing 28 miles an hour? And he said, you were doing it. I said, all right, miss. And she gave me a ticket for 360 something dollars. And I told her thanks. And took the ticket and I leave. That was not what she expected. She expected for me to start real and her and start behave like the rest of black people in the United States. But I remember the scripture, agree. She's not the judge. She's not the lawyer. She's not the jury. So when I come home, I fill out the paper and I plead on the paper, not guilty. And I send it off to the court. Because they're going to call me to come to court. And when I go to court, I'm going to point out about the school bus. You see. But then. The court wrote me a letter and they point out to me that if I lose the case I will have to pay for the court session. How much they're gonna charge me for the court session? And I will still have to pay the ticket and they will cancel my license. And I show it to my daughter. My daughter read one of my daughter. The other reason said, Dad, this is a threat. This is a threat. And she opened her purse and took out the 361 dollar give me. I said, go pay it, go pay it now. Go pay it because this is a threat. I go down immediately to the courthouse and go pay it. Agree with an adversary. All of the killing that happened to black people here in the United States by the cops. A few of us take all of those killing and put them together and look and say, how could this black person go home alive? How could he go home alive? What should he have done? How should he have behaved that he could have gone home alive? And there's only two we find that did everything that he's supposed to do and still get shot. One of them was in Miami with a guy having two hands behind him back up in the air. And the police still shoot him in his leg. And he asked the police why did you shot me? And the guy the police said you don't know why I shot him. And another one in one of them state. Only two of them. But all the other one they could have gone home alive had they just agree. Because the police can tell you anything you feel like tell you. You see. Just tell him thanks for the ticket and go on home. Go on home and plead not guilty. And get your day in court. You don't have to, you don't have to debate your cause right there with him. Why do you want to debate your cause right there with him? That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to debate your cause right there with him. So he can gun you down like a whole dead dog in the street. Don't win no argument. No win no fight. You must never win fight with your wife. 
You lose the marriage. Never win fight with your supervisor. You lose the job. Never win fight with the police officer. You lose your life. No win fight. Agree with an adversary. And then on the ticket, the day of court, you plead not guilty. They're gonna give you a judge, they're gonna give you a jury. Debate your cause with them. Don't debate your cause with the police officer in the street. Especially when you and him alone is there. You crazy? I agree with that adversary. We have many more to go. I have to skip over some of them. But there is one I want us to look at. And this one is esteem others better than yourself. In Philippians 2 and verses 3, he said, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. This is the only way you're going to overcome envy. Never give yourself the praise and never tell yourself how good a preacher you are and how good a teacher you are and how much you know the Bible and how many degrees you have. Always give the praise to the other man. No, take them the praise for yourself. Always give the praise to somebody else. Esteem others better than yourself. The Lord bless you. This is Dr. McBean. We will take up the course some more time.